Hey, I'm Jesse. This is Tula, and this is Roxy. Let's have a devotion. We're in Matthew chapter 13, and we've seen Jesus give this teaching about his parables, how it's a fulfillment of what Isaiah foretold in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Here's verse 13 of Matthew 13. That is why I speak to them in parables, because looking they do not see, and hearing they do not listen or understand. People watched Jesus perform miracles and heard Jesus teach in parables, and they understood neither. They appreciated neither. They could not claim that nobody told them, and they could not claim a lack of evidence. Recall Jesus' denunciations of the towns of Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum because of the witness they had borne to numerous miracles that served as absolutely incontrovertible proof of his lordship, and yet they still denied him. These people had hard hearts. Here in the context of Seattle, there's a lot of hard-heartedness. This is hard soil. Right here in this teaching that is in the middle of both the parable of the sower and the explanation of the parable of the sower, we have a pretty direct first-hand understanding of exactly what Jesus is talking about here. Because as Christians will present the gospel, it will go rejected. We see people misrepresent the teachings of Jesus. And we live in a context wherein we observe this. There are people who do have a knowledge of Jesus and his teachings, and they have it in abundance. There are some spirit-filled, Bible-loving, fruit-overflowing Christians right here in the belly of the beast in the most atheistic city in the least church state in the U.S. And what they have overflows is they have more than enough. And then even those who have a thimble full of knowledge of Jesus and who he is, what they have is taken away. <clears throat> they do have access to churches. However, we're still working on that. We're planting more churches. We're under-churched here. Every church in our city could quadruple in size, and we'd still only be reaching, you know, just just above like double digit percentages of the whole po like just above 10 percent of the population of south king county like we do need more churches and we do need more church planters so if you're a church planter and you're looking to in romans 15 style preach the gospel where he's not been proclaimed there are there are numerous people who have come here 35 percent of the people who live here were born in another country and they've not really heard the gospel of jesus christ Yet there are those who will hear the gospel and walk away not understanding it. They'll see Jesus in the text and they'll not perceive him. They'll not understand it. This is hard soil. There is, uh, there's a lot of soil uh, uh, in, in hearts of Seattle that, that is like the path, right? The, the Mormons have a strong presence here. There's a Buddhist temple just down the street. There's a tarot card reader and spiritist right down the street. And mostly like a uh, really, the, the largest, we have the largest percentage of a population that, that uh, in a Gallup poll reports to adhere to atheism uh, here in the U.S. We also have a whole lot of hearts that are, that uh, do represent like the thorny soil. They are caught up in the things of this world. There's a lot of wealth here. I mean, literally just uh, 25 to 20 minutes from my house, depending on traffic right now, uh, there are the, the homes belonging to two of the richest men in the world. Okay, the, the head of Amazon and the head of Microsoft, former head of Microsoft, former CEO of, of Amazon and the founder of Microsoft. They both live 20-something minutes from my house. There's incredible wealth in this area. And for that reason, they're just stuck or caught up in the things of this world. So this is hard soil. I've preached sermons in the South, you know, where the church is more prevalent. And uh, man, I've I've gotten down from the platform and thought like, ah, man, I botched that. I didn't explain that correctly. Um, I, you know, that illustration that I thought would help people understand the original context just didn't really connect, you know, and then as I'm kicking myself, the altar just floods with people and many of them are giving their lives to Jesus for the first time. Um, and then here in Seattle, you'll preach a sermon and you're like, wow, I really feel like heaven came down to earth during that sermon. And there's like crickets will, will chirp and like nobody will come forward <laughs> at an altar call. Nobody will fill out a connect card and nobody will profess Christ. It's hard soil here. It's hard soil. But we're faithful as we cast the seed. It's not our job to 
try to change the soil of people's hearts. Only the Spirit can really do that. God is the one who enables people to hear and understand the parables. God is the one who does this. It's, it's His will as we get uh, tomorrow into the, to, to the, the Isaiah text that is fulfilled in this text. But it is our job to make disciples of all nations. Spoiler, that's how the, the Gospel of Matthew ends, with the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. That's how this book ends. The resurrected Jesus putting his disciples and all of their successors, that's us, to work making disciples. So we share the Gospel. Sometimes it lands on rocky soil. That happens a lot here. Sometimes it lands along the path. That happens a lot here. Sometimes it lands, uh, sorry, thorny soil. Sometimes it lands on rocky soil where it springs up and it looks like it's going to bear fruit, but then, you know, nothing, nothing comes of it. All right, but, but, right here in teaching about the hard-heartedness and the, the tough soil of the Seattle area, if we're going to do justice to the parable of the sower, we have to acknowledge the type of soil that's named that does bear fruit. Sometimes 30 times, sometimes 60 times, sometimes a hundredfold what was sown. So cast the seed of the gospel. Do not despair. Do not give up. It is never a failure to share your faith. It's a failure to never share your faith. Those who reject the gospel, even what they have in their understanding of Jesus and his teachings will be taken away from them. But sometimes the seed does land on fertile soil and you will watch them bear fruit and have more than enough, an overabundance of the teachings of Jesus to know that he is Lord.